You said when uh, you walked in and we had not yet started recording that uh, that you have a story about us meeting. And let me tell you that when I, when I hear this, <laughs> when I when when I hear that somebody has uh, an old story about meeting me, it gives me great anxiety. <laughs> kind yeah, of because you're really nice. You're because like, I, you just came up to me. You go, a bitch can't suck your own dick. And then you started <laughs> sucking your own dick, and as I tried to do it, you hit me over the head with like a sack of potatoes, <laughs> and it forced my dick into my own mouth. And then I found Wait, out that what? your <laughs> then I found out that your dick was prosthetic, and you were just joking. But I had sucked my own dick by the end of the night meeting you. So you wow. don't need to have any anxiety. Where was this in Vegas? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So uh, what actually happened was we and my wife Kate was with me. Yeah, and I would, and I would I just say I say that because um, yeah, it gives because you they're, anxiety. They're, I, I, I get anxiety because there have been different versions of me, and and if you met a certain version of me, then the story is going to be horrifying. I think that's true. I always <laughs> wish that I had met nitrous oxide you. Okay. Because <laughs> I was a huge nitrous oxide enthusiast. Were you? For years. We did, I did the Critics' Choice Awards. This was a long time ago. And I was doing so much nitrous at that point that I would go on live television, do what I was doing, then run back, look over my notes, hit a couple of nitrous cartridges, and then go back on stage. Because my joke about nitrous is it only lasts like 20, 30 seconds be the best thing to get pulled over doing. Because the cops, like, if you've been doing nitrous and you're like, oh, yeah, a little bit, but what are you going to do about it? Because now it's over. (laughs) That's it. It's all gone. Right. It only Um, lasts 20, 30 seconds, or as long as you keep inhaling it. (laughs) Right, exactly. Well, and that's why after Critics' Choice Awards, we went and we went to the Bel Air, and Kate and I just partied. We know each other since college. We've known each other for, like, 20-some years. And so we just, sometimes we just go into that mode. And we just partied, and we were so excited. And when we woke up the next day, there were like a thousand whipped cartridges because mm-hmm. we had bought the hundred packs, you know. So we just had <laughs> gone through like the same hundreds people. and hundreds and hundreds that night. <laughs> and we were just joking. There was a whole like bar. I don't know how we ordered it, but it was a full bar on a room service cart. Like I guess we just been like, bring it all, yeah. damn it, bring every last one of them. And we just and so Kate woke up. And she was like, oh, man, we got to stop doing nitrous. And, like, as she said that, I was like, oh, I found another 100 pack. And she's like, after that, <laughs> got to stop doing nitrous right after we finished that. But I think we we met you in incredibly uh, grateful, amiable, authentic steve Because cool. you really quickly kind of said – Oh man, I'm a huge fan, and I just I love doing stand up, and it's kind of new to me. But it's it was a while ago. It's at the Laugh Factory. Okay. And so I kind of I thought that was amazing, and it was a great moment for me because you know there's a lot of people that didn't start off as stand up comics and they started doing stand up comedy, like a Jeremy Piven or sure. a lot of these YouTube guys. And a lot of comics are were just like, oh, God, yeah, sure, you're doing stand-up. But the way that you talked about it, just in our brief interaction, I realized, no, this guy has a lot of respect for the form. And then later, subsequently, as I sort of heard your stuff and came to understand, I realized you really were a storyteller, but you were also kind of doing that as stand-up and doing stand-up within that. And I feel like I saw all that on you, like in you right away. And then you were so nice to Kate. And then you talked to Kate's cousin, Giselle, who's just fucking awesome. She's like a goth mom right now. (laughs) And she and her husband's so great, too. And she's a huge fan of yours. And so you blew her fucking mind because she expects you so nervous to meet you. She expects you to be like, oh, it's nice to meet you. And yeah, I'm Steve-O and I got to go. And you just straight up stood there for 10 minutes kind of answering questions and asking her about her life and all this stuff. And she'll she'll never forget that. I mean, it was the coolest thing. Cool, and that's man. the other thing I noticed about you. I was like, yeah, this guy will definitely take ten minutes of his time to permanently alter somebody's life in terms of their stories and who they, you know, because there's a thing never meet your heroes. I just saw you kind of being like, if you meet me and I'm your hero, you're gonna get as much of me as I can give you. I think that 
clip was awesome, but not as awesome as my new book, A Hard Kick in the Nuts, What I've Learned from a Lifetime of Terrible Decisions. My first book's five-star rated on Amazon, and I have no doubt this one will be too. So get the autographed copy right now at steveo.com. Yeah, dude.